Now we are ready to perform the pelvic exam. Part one includes inspection of the external genitalia. It's very important to assess the female pelvis for anatomy before conducting any examination. So let's review the anatomy. We have here the hair bearing skin above the perineum called the mons pubis. The labial fat pads here are called the labia majora. The inner folds are known as the labia minora and the labia minora anteriorly meet to become the clitoral hood or the prepus of the clitoris. The apex of the clitoris is called the glans clitoris. The labia majora meet at the six o'clock location here in a structure called the posterior fourchette. And just underneath the vaginal opening, it lies the perineal body. And just inferior to that is the anus. In order to visualize the structures that are contained within the medial aspects of the labia minora, it is important to put pressure on the labia majora at the four and eight o'clock location like this. And then you're better able to visualize this, the vestibule that lies within. Purposes, I have placed my first two digits inside the vaginal canal to demonstrate the vestibule. At the apex of the vestibule is an opening called the external urethral meatus. And just inferior to that lie two glands called Skeen's glands. And then if I was to remove my digits from the vagina, then you will see the opening of the hymenal ring, which is currently not present in our pelvic model. To complete the female anatomy, I want you to realize there are glands located at the five and seven o'clock location called Bartholin's glands, and they are best assessed with the index finger and the thumb placed in this fashion. Now I'd like to talk to you about the rest of the examination of the external genitalia. On inspection, we are going to be looking for skin lesions, subcutaneous or skin swelling, any pigmented lesions, any areas of ulcerations or infestations, any piercings that may be present, as well as noting any discharge that may be present at the vaginal opening. When you see discharge, it is important to comment on the color, odor, texture, and amount that, that may be present. This concludes the inspection of the external genitalia. When starting the inspection of the internal genitalia, it's very important to have all your equipment ready at the bedside. So this would include minimal most a type of speculum that is appropriate for your patient, lubricant, and water is generally the preferred lubricant if a pap smear is to be performed. As well, you need a good light source for every good pelvic exam. When you're looking at speculums and how to make a decision which one to select for your patient, it really depends upon the parity of the patient and also whether or not she's been sexually active in her past. So we have metal speculums and then there are disposable speculum options. When you are looking at metal speculums, there are two different kinds that are available. One is called the Graves speculum and the other is the Peterson. So you can see that the Graves is, is a larger duck belt kind of a speculum and the Peterson has much narrower sidewalls. So this is meant, the Peterson is meant for the nulliparous patient and the Graves would be appropriate for the multiparous patient. When you're looking at a speculum itself, um, just to define the, the anatomy of the speculum, these are the blades of the speculum. Here we have uh, the thumb lever, that opens up the speculum in order for you to visualize the uh, contents of the vagina. As well, this is the thumb screw, that if you are releasing it, it allows for this, the blades to separate, and then you're better able to negotiate the vaginal walls in uh, women that may be grand multiparous patients. And then remember to lower it down and tighten the screw before you actually remove the speculum uh, from the vagina. 
So in order to decide whether you're going to use a metal speculum or a disposable speculum, it really depends upon the institution you're in. If you're in private practice, I would think most people tend to have metal speculums that they can autoclave. It's much more cost effective. Whereas in um, a hospital setting, uh, the institution may choose to use disposable speculums just to avoid the cost of sterilization.